Hello and welcome to Estuary Elim Church Online. It's great to have you here with us today for our online harvest service. Estuary Elim is one church with many people in multiple locations. And while we're physically located in Essex in the United Kingdom, through our online church and podcast, we're connecting with people around the world. A special welcome to you if you are joining us today for the first time. Just so that you know what to expect, we start the online service with a video for children, then we sing a couple of songs and the words are displayed on screen so that you can sing along as we worship God together in song. Then I'll be preaching a harvest service and after the sermon we will sing two more songs and draw the online service to a close. May God bless us as we spend time together today worshipping him. Let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for your love towards each and every one of us. We thank you for this opportunity to meet together and bring you our praise and our worship. We thank you, Lord, for the seasons of harvest that come year after year. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love, your mercy and your grace. Help us today to worship you in spirit and in truth. Open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your word and help us to apply it to our lives every day. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our children's video this morning is about the parable of the farmer and the seed. This is Jesus, Hey-o! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, Jesus went and sat beside the sea. A great crowd gathered around him. Oh, hey everyone. So he got in a boat and told them many things in parables. Okay, listen to this. He told them this story. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil among rocks. The seed began to grow quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil, this seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When Jesus had said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Hey, Jesus! Yeah? Later, the disciples came to Jesus and asked what this parable meant. Jesus said, The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are treated badly for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the desire for other things. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted.
That was a great reminder of just one of the many parables Jesus told his disciples. May we also be disciples of Jesus who are eager to learn and eager to understand the many important things he said and taught. We're going to sing our first two songs of praise and worship. The first is God every moment and the second is How Great Thou Art. <laughs> So 
It's time for the sermon. May God bless the preaching of his word to us today. Look around you. There's so much work to do. 
This world is in no condition for us to simply sit back and watch. There is a tangible, desperate need for Jesus. A glimpse of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Jesus experienced this. He saw it firsthand. The need broke his heart and filled him with compassion. He turned to his disciples and said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This alone should stir our hearts. It's a calling. A calling to make a difference. To share the truth of the gospel. To be a light in the darkness. To be the church. It's time for us to look beyond ourselves. To turn our focus to the field. To answer the call and passionately share the love of Jesus. This is our mandate. This is our mission. Are you ready to do the work? Today I want us to think about the question, why do Christians celebrate harvest? The simple answer, it's an opportunity for us to thank God for everything he's blessed us with. In Old Testament times there were three major festivals where the Jewish people took the opportunity to thank God for blessing them. The first festival was the Feast of Passover. It was usually held in April each year at the beginning of the harvest. It was at this festival that God's people recalled how God had been their saviour by miraculously leading them out of slavery in Egypt. It's no coincidence that it was at this time of celebration, the Feast of Passover, that Jesus was crucified in AD 29. Through his death, Jesus provided the only way of salvation for all who would trust in him as personal saviour and lord. It's only because of Jesus' sacrifice that we've been set free from the punishment that we deserve. In his death, Jesus suffered in our place. He paid the price for our sins, past, present and future. Because of his perfect sacrifice, the punishment for our sins has passed over us and to him. And we have been forgiven. We become sons and daughters of God. The second festival was the Feast of Weeks, or Harvest, where the Jews gave thanks to God for the crops. This festival occurred at the end of the barley harvest. It was also known as Pentecost because it was 50 days after Passover that it was timed to happen. Chapter 2 of the Book of Acts records that it was at Pentecost when the power of the Holy Spirit was released on the disciples and they were able to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And as a result of one sermon, 3,000 people became followers of Jesus. The third festival was the Feast of Tabernacles, which occurred after the grape and grain harvest was over. It was at that festival that the Jews would camp out for a week in tents, recalling the temporary dwellings they had after the exodus from Egypt. All three of these festivals reminded the people of God's blessings on them, physical blessings and spiritual blessings. And the festivals reminded the people that God is a faithful God who would continue to bless the people year after year after year. I've never been a farmer or much of a gardener, but I understand that to have a good crop from a harvest, it requires a lot of preparation, care, and patience. Preparation in that the ground must be properly prepared and the seed correctly sown. Care in that the seed must be watered and nurtured by the light. And patience because crops do not grow overnight. Maybe today you're not waiting for wheat to grow in a field. 
but I would guess that you are waiting for a harvest of some kind. Different people have different ideas about harvests. So let me ask you some questions. What is your harvest? What is the harvest you are waiting for? What is the harvest that you want to celebrate? Is your harvest about finances, to have a certain amount of money? Is your harvest a dream of a bigger home? For some, a harvest would simply be a roof over their head and sufficient food on the table. Would your harvest be a new sports car or a dream holiday? What about the church? What does harvest mean and look like for us as the church of God? Simply put, harvest represents the harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Today I want us to consider three specific principles about harvest, three things that we need to know and understand. First, harvest is a consequence. Second, harvest is a process. And third, harvest is a season. The first principle we need to understand is harvest is a consequence. We will always reap what we sow. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 10 says, Don't be misled, you cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. The harvest is the consequence of what you sow. When you sow wheat seeds, you will reap a wheat harvest. So to satisfy sinful desires and you will harvest the consequences of decay and death. So to please God and the consequences will be eternal life and daily blessings. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 and 7, the Apostle Paul wrote, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The result of understanding your harvest is a consequence is that we need to know the quality and the quantity of the seed we sow for the harvest that we're looking for. Let's consider a very practical area of life. Proverbs 18.24 in the message is translated like this. Friends come and friends go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. To have friends in this life, you need to be friendly yourself. If you want to have a harvest of friends, you need to sow seeds of friendship. Over the years, I've met a number of people who say they have no friends. And when I ask about their life, they are often people who don't seek or start conversation. And if they do, it's often negative in its nature. They don't invite people to their home. They stay separate in a crowd. And maybe not all seeds of friendship will germinate. But if no seeds are ever sown, then there can never be anything to harvest. The most common seeds we sow every day are the words that we speak. Every word spoken is like a seed. Do you ever ask yourself, what kind of word seeds am I sowing? Are my words a blessing to others? Does my speech bring glory to God? How often do I speak to others about the love of God? How often do I share the truth of Jesus and the free gift of salvation that is offered to all who will believe. How often do I speak when I should be silent? And how often am I silent when I should speak? In Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 it says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. 
God has established the principle of seed time and harvest into the fabric of his creation. Harvest is not just a farming principle, it's a law of life. And if we ignore it or disobey it, then we cannot expect to reap the benefits of it. Don't be misled. We can't ignore God and get away with it. Friends, what is the harvest that you are looking for? You need to plant the quality and quantity of seed that is in line with a harvest that you are expecting. There are so many possible harvest blessings. Work and career opportunities, healing and wholeness, new relationships, joy, peace, love. So many possible harvest blessings that God has available for you to reap. But first, seeds must be sown to begin to generate those possibilities. So the first principle, harvest is a consequence. We will always reap what we sow. The second principle, harvest is a process. So don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Your harvest will happen, but it may take time. It will take time. We live in an instant society. Instant coffee, microwave meals, non-iron shirts. People have forgotten that some things have to take time. Unfortunately, because people don't understand this, if it comes to a time when they need to reap and there is nothing available, so they think they can quickly go and sow some seeds, hoping that some miracle will happen and what they require will grow overnight. Now, God does still perform miracles. But the key thing for us to understand is that the Lord wants us to learn how to live in blessings daily not in need of a daily miracle just to get us through the day. The words of Jesus recorded in Mark chapter 4 verses 26 to 29 are, The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. But he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. Blessings come through understanding our harvest. Harvest is not a single event, it's a process. Our life, our spiritual growth, happen through a process, not just one single event. Your life, my life, is not defined by one event, but by a process. Opportunities, choices, problems, victories. Remember, all things work together. What we often see as the event is in actuality one of two things. It could be the beginning of the process, or it could be the end of the process. Understanding that your harvest is a consequence means you need to determine your seed. Understand that your harvest is a process. That means that you need to make preparation. Remember the words in Mark 4. They said, night and day, while the farmer was asleep or awake. Once the farmer sown seed, he went on with other activities. In between sowing and reaping, farmers have other things to do. To think that in between they have nothing to do is wrong. And perhaps there are those who would call themselves Christians, who would call themselves disciples of Christ, who when they go to church on a Sunday, who when they attend a meeting, they think that they don't need to do anything else about God or for God until the following Sunday. That's wrong. We're not meant to do nothing in between. While the seed is going through the process of transformation, so must we. The seed you sow is not the same gain that you reap. People don't reap the full potential of their harvest because they don't understand that harvest is a process. The barn capacity for seed is smaller than the barn capacity for grain. Because your harvest is a process, you must do all you can to increase the capacity of your life to actually reap your harvest. 
Your mindset and the thoughts of your heart, they are the dimensions of your barn, if you will. Proverbs 4.23 Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues, the dimensions of life. Some people and churches are always talking about sowing, but speak very little about reaping because they've not grown, they've not developed, they haven't expanded, they haven't extended the barn of their minds to receive the concept that they can reap. Isaiah chapter 54 verses 2 and 3 Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. When it comes time to reap, it is too late to do the building and the extensions. When you understand that your harvest is a process, you will use your time wisely to read, to study, to learn from God's word, to enlarge your capacity to receive the harvest. First principle, harvest is a consequence. We will always reap what we sow. Second principle, harvest is a process, so don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged, don't give up. The third principle, harvest is a season. A harvest of blessing at the appropriate time or due season. In Greek, there's two words used to describe time. Kronos and Kairos. Chronos is the word from which we get the word chronological, normal, general time. Kairos means a fixed and a defined time, a definite time, opportune or seasonal time, the right time if you will. It's a limited period of time and sometimes because of weather conditions a reaping season has to be moved forward. Farmers are able to read the signs, they're able to understand the timings and the seasons. Understand friends, our harvest is a season. Knowing that means we know, or should know, how to discern the appropriate time. There's an account in the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 about a group of people in David's army who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It's very important if you're going to reap your harvest to know, to understand God's timing. One day Jesus said to the Pharisees they could read the signs in the sky and know what kind of day it was going to be but they lacked the sensitivity to know the times they were living in. And Jesus wept over Jerusalem as he entered because their lack of understanding of the season caused them to miss the day of his visitation. You can read about that in Luke chapter 19 verse 44. We need to be wise. We need to know the season of harvest. Like wise men or like wise women, we need to make the most of our opportunities. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us that there's a season for everything. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? I've seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. A time to sow and a time to reap. It then goes on to say that everything is beautiful in its own time. Let's draw the sermon to a close. Let me ask you again the questions I asked earlier. What is your harvest? What is the harvest you're waiting for? 
What is the harvest that you want to celebrate? God wants to bless you. He's put in place the principle of harvest, sowing and reaping, by which he delivers blessings to you and to me. We need to understand our harvest. We need to understand that it's a product of our sowing. Therefore, we need to sow seed and the right seed for the harvest that we want to see. A process of growth, we need to prepare in large our capacity to receive the harvest. A period of time, therefore, we need to be sensitive to the seasons and wise with our time and not miss our opportunity. Friend, are you ready to celebrate the harvest that God wants to bring into your life? Are you willing to actually sow the seed that you may be able to reap in abundance later on? It's God that gives the increase, but God has called us to be good stewards of what he has entrusted to us. Friends, trust God in all seasons, in all circumstances, and he will bring an abundant harvest into your life, a harvest of blessings, a harvest of righteousness. Trust him, obey him, wait for him to act, to move, to work in your life. Be gripped by his grace, be gripped by his love, be gripped by his mercy and walk in his ways day by day for his honour and for his glory. Amen. I hope that God spoke to you through that sermon. Whatever harvest you are waiting for in your life, I pray that God will bring an abundance of blessing to you. Seek God in prayer, then wait for him to move in a miraculous way in your life. Let's sing together again, Great is thy faithfulness, and then be praised by Elim Sound. thy faithfulness O God my Father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand have provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest Sun, moon and stars in their courses above Join with all nature in manifold witness To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence
presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto I hope you've been blessed by the service today. We're going to end our live stream to Facebook now. So to our Facebook friends, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've been blessed by the service today. Remember you can connect with us during the week at our website estuaryelim.church 
or you can watch recorded videos on our YouTube channel or listen to audio sermons and thoughts via our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Spotify. Thanks for being here. May God bless you. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.